Hey guys, Doug here, KansasRebuilders.com. This is a video on hanging drywall. I'm gonna try to go real fast so you can rewatch it if you miss anything. But as always, let's start with the basics. Pencil, safety goggles, we got a tape measure, we got a razor knife. Uh, we're also already prepared with our drill. Uh, we have a hammer, we have our pry bar, and a caulking gun. If you're doing it Doug's way, you're gonna glue it. We glue everything. We'll talk about that more. Huge time savers. It's going to be this T-square, drywall T-square, shaped like a T, real easy to remember. And the other thing I want you to get is a keyhole saw. Uh, we are working from a ladder, so we're prepared for that. Uh, but I want to talk to you about this lift. Uh, if you go to several other websites, talk about supporting the product on the ceiling. They talk to you about taking a two before, nailing one flat on top. You can do that. Problem is it's almost impossible to get a good outcome to do that by yourself without breaking the product or breaking your neck. So any tool rental store, they all rent this lift. So anyway, let's get started. Okay guys, first there's a couple things we need to know. Uh, Sheetrock comes standard sizes, four by eight, 10, 12, and 14. But in most situations, people are dealing with four by eight sheets. Um, so you want to plan that out uh, ahead of time with the size of the room to prevent getting butt joints. In some situations like this one, we have to have them. Uh, the room's an odd size. It's like 16, eight by, by 17 feet. So they don't make that size sheetrock. Plus we're down in a basement uh, and we couldn't get sheetrock down the stairs. So we have to deal with these. I'll show you how to deal with them. Uh, what we want to know about those first, whenever we do have to have a scene is at all times, the sheetrock must break on a stud, which means it must go halfway over there. It's never in any situation is it okay to break it out here without any kind of support behind the wall. If that ever happens and somebody leans against the wall, it's going to break right there. When hanging our sheetrock, I'm hanging it in a horizontal, I, I guess that's a good term for it. Uh, I'm hanging it laying down. If we do it right here, we can just, it's out of sight, mud, you'll never see the hump down here. I also always hang the top first. Makes it easier. I, I know that doesn't make sense in that you could set it on the ground and then set the next sheet on. But what that's preventing is you having to be exact with your measurements so that you know that when you put your next sheet up, you don't have to cut it or you don't have a big gap in the top. If I take the top sheet and put it up against the ceiling, I know my gap's already closed, and then I can measure the ground down below. Got the first sheet's hung, but I'll show you the majority of the video hanging a sheet that needs to be cut. It's easier to do it that way. So here it is, guys. I'm getting a measurement here uh, from my wall for my next piece. I'm getting 82 inches. So the, that's at the bottom of the sheet. So I'm gonna go to the top of the sheet. Get my tape up here. Measure that up there. I'm getting 82 and a quarter. So I'm 82 at the bottom, 82 and a quarter. It's just the way it is. I didn't frame the place. So anyway, what I want to do is I want to use the smallest measurement. That's 82 inches. But I also need to consider this, that I have sheetrock coming in on this wall and sheetrock coming in on this wall. The thickness of the sheetrock that we're using is half inch. So I know I have a half inch of play at this side that you'll never see this crack so I can keep it nice and tight. So I'm gonna go with the 82 measurement at the bottom and know that it's gonna cover, maybe fudge it just, you know, 81 and 7 eighths, just a little bit under because again, I'm hanging it by myself. I'm gonna put this sheet up here. I want it to go in as easy as possible. I'm prepping the area. Uh, I'm a huge, huge advocate and I live my life by gluing everything. A guy once told me, nails and screws are only temporary holds until the glue sets. So it, it reduces the rattle, keeps the sheetrock from moving. I want to get as much glue uh, wherever I can to get it on there to make sure that it stays. Uh, so we just, let's glue everything. Okay, so we have our measurement from over here. We know that our short distance was 82 at the bottom. 82 and a quarter at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull a measurement at the top. We'll mark 81 and 7. Take our T-square, 
that I ask you to purchase to make your life easier. So anyway, I want to put it right on my mark. I'm going to put my foot down here to hold it at the bottom, and I'm just going to score it with a razor knife. Halfway down, and then I'm going to pull it halfway up. Do it again, just to make sure we get a nice clean snap. We got the scar line here. Score line, not scar line. Anyway, I'm going to take the sheet. I'm just going to pop the back. Break just like that. I get in right here behind the sheet. I'm going to take my knife. Cut it halfway up. Cut it halfway down. And we're ready to go. Now, again, sheet rock, we're doing this by ourselves. We want to take it and know that the sheet is best balanced if we take it from the center. So I'm not a very big guy here. Obviously I can handle this. I don't know the actual weight. I'll look that up uh, and post that with this video. I'm going to grab this sheet right in the center. I'm going to pick it up, use my knee, grab it by my hand and carry it over. I just want to get it in this corner. I don't want to smear my glue too much. I'm just going to lift it up and then I'm going to close that gap. I'm going to hold it with one hand, but uh, this would be handy if you had somebody to help you or you had your ladder sitting here. I keep my drill on a belt clip. Screw it in. Now, it'll actually stay. I don't recommend leaving it there. But Anyway, I'm a little guy. Like I said, if you keep the weight in the center of the sheet, you can lift it up there, get it as tight as you can at the top. Uh, now, let's talk about gaps. I'm gonna finish getting this screwed back. Remember on the walls, the ceiling, it's every 12 inches. On the walls, every 16 inches. And that's actually listed without the glue, but again, we're doing it Doug's way, so we're gluing everything. Uh, but anyway, let's talk about this gap right here. Gaps are okay, and actually in this situation they're encouraged. It's, it's a way, when we go to take this and finish it, we want to get the mud in there and we want to get it to hold in this joint. So you can see it, let me zoom in here. We can actually see that that gap's about an eighth of an inch. That gap's okay because we want to get the mud in there and it'll actually hold on to the edges of those sheets. Anything more than an eighth of an inch is too much. We don't want to have big, massive gaps that we have to fill in with our mud later. Some sheetrock guys will tell you to go back through with your knife if it's too tight and cut the edges to bevel them so that they can squeeze mud in there behind the tape. Now, I don't know how well you can see on this particular product, but you have these little X's. I don't know if you can see those everywhere on the sheet rock. That's to give you a reference point so that when you screw this screw in, you know that you screwed that screw into the stud that far from that X. So you can guess that same distance from that X and you have an inch and a half to play with so you can get that. But let me talk to you about setting the screw. Okay, when setting a screw here, I'm gonna show you this angle. I know that I'm this distance from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set that in there. Now, if you look, it just starts dimpling the paper right here. That's perfect, just below the paper line, but you can see that it still held the paper in place. If I drive it too far, well, that just broke the paper. The paper is what holds the sheetrock on the wall. So actually that's bad. So no need to pull that screw out. I just did that for an example, but I want to show you again that we don't want to break the paper. Now we got the upper hung. We want to go ahead and hang the lower. So I want to measure up from where I know the sheet's going to end. So on this far side, up from the concrete, it's 45 and 3 eighths. Then I'm going to come here where the sheet's going to break. And this measures 45 and 16. So see our concrete in this basement is not actually level. Um, and you'll notice, I'll, I'll show you a picture here um, of the concrete actually having humps in it. So we wanna again, like we did on the wall, 
take the shortest measurement and I'm directly on concrete and you know uh, concrete sweats and attracts moisture. I don't want my drywall to be directly on the floor so I want to cut it a quarter inch short but remember we're having beige trim or whatever you're putting around the outside of the room is going to cover any gap that we have at the bottom. Uh, we'll notice we have an album that we're going to have to cut for it and we also have a light switch in this wall. Now I'm going to go ahead and we'll cut this. Okay, so I got the sheet cut at 44 and 3 quarters, which was a quarter inch short. You can see it's sitting directly on the ground, and I have this gap. I'm going to go ahead and measure from this next sheet, because we know these two are going to be tight buttoned together. So we have 29 and 3 eighths to the top, and 33 and an eighth to the bottom. So 29 and 3 eighths to the top, 33 and 3 sixteenths. We want to keep those holes as tight as possible uh, because we don't want it to come back when we're finishing the sheetrock and mud around it. So we do want to keep it tight. And then we know that we're pulling from this direction is where this sheet breaks on eight foot. So we're going to say that this is 32 and three quarters and 35 and a quarter. 32, three quarters, five, so I've got those measurements. I got my down measurements from this sheet, and I got my over measurements. So let me get my square. We're gonna mark those. And then we know the side of the sheet is still square. This is where the jab knife comes in handy. So using our jab knife, what I wanna do is make sure there's nothing that I can stab behind the sheet. Uh, make sure all the electrical lines, everything's out of the way. I take this knife, and if this was straight on, I actually want to bevel this cut. So I'm going to tip it back so that the back of the outlet is a larger size than the front. So if I'm going to put it into the side here, I want to turn it, and I'm just going to kind of wiggle it in there. It's nice and sharp. Be very careful. So now I want to take it, tip it this direction. Still stay on the block. And then you can do it this direction. This way is a little easier if you take your razor knife and kind of bevel your knife, put it at an angle, cut across, and then just pop it out like that. And then you can cut it and it'll fall right out. Here's the part we cut out. You can see this is the face and this is the back, so we put a bevel to it. The reason why we put that bevel in there is because it's giving us mistake room. And we see that the outlet's kind of hitting on one side. All we have to do is take our razor knife, and because it's beveled, we can just take the knife and shave off what we need on the side if it doesn't fit exactly. We got the outlet cut, we got the light switch cut out, we got them, we know they fit, but we still got this gap. Well, this is where the pry bar comes in handy. You see how it has this little curve to it? Now I'm going to zoom in. Okay, so we're going to take it, we're going to press down with our foot here, hold it, put the screw on, and there it is. A couple things I didn't mention, whenever you're doing a butt joint, Stagger your butt joints from the top to the bottom. Whenever possible, if you can't get the right size dimension sheetrock to do it without having a butt joint, try to break those above windows and doors. But you always want to hang the ceiling first. It was easier to film this video showing you a wall application. Anyway, here's how to hang the ceiling uh, from a list. I'll just fast forward through it real quick.
show you an easy way to use up all your scrap, but of course we need to glue it first. So what I want to do is I want to go in behind it with my razor knife and score it just like I did on the sheets down below. Okay, so I got it scored on the back side. Now let's position my ladder here. Take this, and just like I did below, it'll break. So I know I scored it right along the top of this sheetrock line here. So now I can take my knife, score it that direction, comes loose, got a nice straight edge. Take it right over here. Again, let me thank Catherine Barrett Photography. That's the in-home photo studio that I'm doing the drywall on. And we'll see you next time.